Hello folks, today we're going to be going over the environment art AMA of which was posted on Spectrum. We'll nicely go through and summarize the questions and, and the answers for all such questions in this video today. Welcome to the channel, my name is Jacob, so let's get started. So Pyro has a lava planet, are we going to see lava flow everywhere or will it be static and or maybe volcanoes that are active? And the answer, unfortunately our tech currently does not support flowing lava or even water so the art direction of the planet was changed to static cooled down lava instead. It is definitely something we want to tackle properly in the future though, either as an update to Pyro 3 or a different planet in a different system. And the next question, will we ever see forests like in the Carrick trailer in the PU? And to answer, there are definitely ideas and concepts for having forests or jungles for open systems. The Stanton system we've worked on until now didn't require lush biomes and the tech wasn't ready to scatter millions of plants to create a dense forest. We're still improving our tech to allow us to have more assets on a planet but the environment team is already looking forward to try out something new and create some beautiful forests in the future. Moving on. Moving forward beyond gas giants, what is your team's current what is your team currently working on regarding new planet, planet biomes coming in the future? When we moved over to working on the Paris system, we created and are still creating new assets on all levels of content to build completely unique and fresh biomes. From an art direction point of view, we want to make sure that there is a clear differentiation between the Stanton and Pyro system. If you're on a planet in the Pyro system, you will know it's in the Pyro system. And the following question, what can you tell us on the progress of the Pyro system? Now this is a long one, bear in mind. The team has already been working on Pyro for some time and it's progressing quite well. We have also seen not not seen any decrease in the team's weekly output considering the working from home situation. New geology packs surface materials are consistently being added to our libraries that allow us to construct exciting and fresh files with very different looks. Improving existing assets from a quality point of view is also being worked on to ensure consistency between the new and old libraries, besides creating all the content necessary for Pyro. There is work being done on the planet tech tools, which has always been a dependency. Any changes to tech means some kind of rework or adjustment on our end as well. This is a very good thing because with these new changes, any updates slash tweaks in the future can be done much quicker in the future. And so the following question, how will planets be updated with new biomes? Meaning will only newer planets get the updated biomes or will existing planets be reworked when more biomes join the game? With one of the recent updates to the planet tech, we are now able to add and change everything on the planet in a very non-destructive and much more procedural way than we could when we originally recreated the existing planet slash moons end of last year. The improvement allows us to go back to any planet and every biome on them and update slash improve and even add new ones if, necess if, the necess if, blah, 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 if this arises as well as giving us more natural transitions between them. And the following question, what is the status of any work towards a road generation tool? This was first talked about a few sitcoms back, but I haven't heard much since. In the past, we did create height maps with some basic forms of roads. An example would be the mining pits on Hurston. This is not an ideal solution and we will definitely be working to create more sophisticated roads in the future. Currently there are a lot of rocks on planets slash moons. This makes driving around with wheeled vehicles hard. Will we see a reduction of the amount of surface rocks in the future? We are tweaking the amount of rocks on all existing and upcoming moons and planets to make transversal in vehicles more comfortable. And the following question, can we expect huge and unique planetary terrain formations like big craters like on old Yela or hollows visible from orbit? Huge craters, yes. Sometimes when we tackle new planets, we experiment, uh, experiment a bit trying to figure out how to get visual features like these in using our updated tools. Following question, what are the next steps for Planet Tech V4? We've had a lot of improvements in the tech being implemented lately and it's getting closer to what it was originally envisioned to be when we set out on the planetary tech and planet rework. With those, and a few more improvements that are still being worked on right now, 
that will bring the planet tech to a state where we can create and iterate on existing and new planets moons very quickly and have everything come together for a more coherent final frame so right now the focus is mostly on improving quality and speed and once that is in a really solid place we'll look into new currently unanswered challenges following question will trees ever be breakable when a super heavy spaceship rams them we definitely want to have breakable vegetation in the future but right now that has not been any work or r d on that we're currently doing r d for touch bending so that botanicals so plants will bend when the player walks through them uh, or our vehicle drives through them breakable vegetation would be the next step then the following question there are a lot of old geology assets in the game that are quite subpar in quality compared to the new ones the rocks in Delmar, for example the spiky ones in Delamar, etc would they ever get replaced with better ones yes and very soon as well we are currently in the process of replacing a lot of the old theology geol that word assets with new better ones using the new organics shader and we will continue to do so until all are on the same quality level and the next question are you working on a different kind of are you working on different kinds of caves i see alien ones can you give us some information about those not at the moment the focus for us right now is on pyro planets we had many ideas for caves that had been put on the backlog in order to ship tier one we will revisit those once it is time to expand existing planets with more points of interest but just to give you an example we have prototypes for caves you can enter with different sized vehicles the following question why are the icy caves from the citizen con demo not in the game that's a bit misleading that we only got the regular copy pasted ones with microsecond considering you said once we got s socks we will have hundreds of different caves across the planet the cave shown at CitizenCon is very similar to the ones currently down at Microtech and its moons. You're right, now with Essox, we are not bound by the number of caves in the verse anymore. The reason we didn't invest more time either just generating new rocky caves or actually working on completely new arch types like ice caves is the question of importance and currently Pyro has a higher in priority for now. Personally, I would love to get back to working on the next tier of caves, improving their versatility, add more arch types, gameplay opportunities, etc. There was so much feedback from the community, and it's all written down on my personal notebook, waiting to get understood once we shift gears and begin additional work on caves. Next question With the development of Crusader, is there development on tools that will make gas giants easier to produce in the future similar to planet tech crusader is our starting point when it comes to gas giants once we are happy with the way it looks there is no reason for us to reuse that tech to help us create additional gas giants what's the next major hurdle for planets once the current round of improvements to the planet tech is implemented and applied to our existing content we actually intend to have a look at exactly those three things you mentioned together with engineering and, and time spent to research on how to solve those big questions while continuing to produce new planets obviously are you going to remove all or almost all the rocks with the grass tech and add roads on the planets slash moons for a better drive on them Instead of creating artificial roads for pristine areas of a moon or planet, we are tweaking the density and placement of rocks to have natural roads appear by not spawning rocks everywhere. Next question. How is your team currently tackling the issue of Crusaders clouds? clouds? What has been done or what are you planning to do slash use? We have achieved good results. So far, we are using the planet tech as a base. However, it is a bit early to give exact details on the final frame. Next question. Uh, will there be underwater plants and points of interest, etc.? Most likely, but it's not a priority for us right now since other departments would, need, would first need to work on those things that allow players to access those environments. When can we see other variants of cave entrances, i.e. the Gladius, the Gladius size hole showed off on an ISC planet episode a while back? Yes, what we showed in the ISC was not was no railway work and will get picked up in the future again. 
Personally, I'm not satisfied with the amount of variation in our cave entrances have, but that's something we had to learn from our first release. We've got a solid plan on how to solve this in the future for tier two, so stay tuned. Any plans to add more and expand the library of organic assets of existing planets like Hurston and Microtech? We are always improving existing sets whenever we get a tech update or add new organic assets like rocks or plants. When we feel we have something that could replace an existing asset or an older moon, we go in and swap it out. Moving on. Are you working or have plans to work on something like a paradise island with crystal clear water, white sands, beaches and things like that? Do we see something like that in the ice? In, do we'll see something like that in Star Citizen? Wow, that sentence. We've just recently worked on more believable beaches and coastlines but don't expect them to have white sand. How much influence do you have on the harvestables design, law, and function? Anything interesting you'd like to share or hint at that we might see floating in Crusader or melting around Pyro? The usual process of a harvestable is that the law team comes up with harvestable ideas and sends this over to the concept art team where they will visualize and the harvestable together with our art director. When the concept is done, the environment art team will discuss the harvestable with the art director and we as artists can always come up with additional ideas for the design or function. Does the team in Frankfurt help build assets for Squadron 42 or is it exclusively for the PU? The Frankfurt team primarily creates assets for the Persistent Universe due to very different technical and visual requirements as well as limitations. For our specific team, there's less crossover. When it comes to tools we deliver for the PU through other teams, including those working on Squadron 42, are obviously welcome to use these if it, is, if it helps achieve their goals and their feedback, to, yeah, feedback is taken into account when developing them with the, big, the biggest example being the planet tech. Can planets be hollow or without big chunks? Using the current version of planet tech, they, are not, they cannot be hollow or missing big chunks. There might be other approaches to building planets should we get building a planet that actually needs it or changes to the tech that, to allow for that, but we will cross that bridge when we come to it. Will space slash land mineables in the future spawn stacked on top of one another for a variety of mining vehicles, i.e. will you have hand mineables on the surface of Prospector mineables, on the surface of Orion mineables all clumped together so multiple equipment is needed to fully harvest an asteroid or node. We already have first person mineable rocks spawning on the bigger ship mineables. The idea behind it being that you need to get out of the old prospector when you spot a smaller mineable and use the multi-tool. Then head back into the prospector to mine the ship mineable itself. We do plan to expand that, function that functionality more in the future. Next question. Can you talk about the future of mining both on planets and in space? How close to what we have now in the ship and the location of rocks is it to what it is envisioned for the final state. Tricky to say what the final state of mining is going to look like since we are always listening to the feedback we get from you guys, improving the system accordingly. Personally, I see the current implementation of mining as a good base that we expand, that we plan to expand upon. So that is a summary of the questions asked and answered. I haven't read through all of them, some of the, the bigger questions with the longer questions and longer answers I've not covered through, so I will post the link to the AMA in the description below and pin it in a comment so you can check it out yourself. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and don't forget to help our sponsor the subscribe button. Otherwise, thank you ever so much for watching, and goodbye for now.